Well, I just pulled the uh, top off my uh, Hafler uh, DH220 amplifier here. Use the two sides, the two amplifier sides, and the power supply in the middle. I've never had this thing apart. When I got it, I just started using it. And I've been using it for a couple of years, and I was just measuring some of the um, DC on the uh, output um, of each channel. I noticed it was kind of high. One was like 300 millivolts, and one was like 40 millivolts. So I think it probably needs some adjustments. So I thought I'd open it up, uh, blow all the dust bunnies out, take a quick look at some of the capacitors, and uh, do some adjustments. So that's what I'm going to do. Here we go. Okay, reading the directions here to do the bias adjustment. And it says you remove the uh, fuse going to the B+, plus, which I've done, and you put your ammeter in, in line there. And you set up the uh, input voltage to 120, as close as you can get. And then you measure the current. And it's supposed to be, uh, was it 275? You can see I got four, got almost twice that. So I'm supposed to adjust this little pot right down here to get 275. So let's, let's try that. Okay, I'm tweaking on that pot to get 275. Getting pretty close. It's pretty touchy. There we go, that's pretty close, 275. Oh, perfect. Okay. Next. Okay, before moving on to the offset adjustment, I'm gonna go ahead and do the other side, and I'll just do this off camera because it's exactly the same as that one. I just want to show you here that, you know, these things, those 10,000 microfarad capacitors can hold a, a charge. So I've got a little this is basically just a uh, 100 ohm uh, resistor between two clips. I just kind of you know, short these out just to make sure that I discharge that voltage before I start reaching in there and grabbing things. So a good little safety tip. All right, this other side I just did, it was set at about 380 millivolts. So I've got that set down to 275 also, almost exactly. So I've got this number one, this bias adjustment completed on both sides. Now off to the offset adjustment. For the offset adjustment, you're supposed to connect your voltmeter set in millivolts uh, rating to uh, the output. And then you adjust the this pot here to zero volts. You see we're up around 368 millivolts, so it's a little high. So I'll start tweaking on that, see if I can get it down to zero. Okay, tweaking on uh, that pot right there, on this channel. And I've got it down to real close to zero volts. It's very touchy, but that's about as close as I can get. Uh, this side must be a problem. I'm going to have to start getting in there and measuring because I can't get down to It's like a couple hundred millivolts even when it's adjusted all the way to one end So that side of the amp seems to have a problem So time to investigate some more Okay on the good channel This pot with the output uh, set at uh, zero volts that pot's right about in the middle of the uh, setting. If you measure, uh, you know, the center tap between the two outer taps, it's you know just right at uh, halfway. This one is all the way over to the edge, and uh, that's the minimum voltage. And it's still you know, a couple hundred, what, 150 millivolts instead of zero millivolts. So. The pot itself seems to be good. I'm thinking we might have something wrong with uh, something else in the schematic. Maybe some of these components in here. I'll start taking a look at some of these capacitors and resistors and measuring them and seeing what they look like. 
I didn't really find any uh, issues with this part of the circuit here. Everything seems to be okay. I haven't gone through everything yet, but I will continue to go. But as I was poking around on this board and monitoring uh, you know, the output of that channel, all of a sudden I got you know, 20 or 30 volts or negative volts on the, the output. So something is definitely going wrong with this board. And I noticed a faint sound of, you know, it sounded like arcing. So I was poking around on everything, trying to see where that was coming from. And then as I also had it on the, the dim bulb tester just to limit the current, just in case something seriously goes wrong. I didn't want to burn up those, uh, you know, output transistors. So I noticed when I was wiggling a little capacitor that was right here, and here it is out of the circuit. Um... The dim bulb just would go very bright and then back to dim bright. So there was, I think there's some issue uh, with this capacitor. It, it, out of circuit, it measures just fine, but uh, maybe internally the uh, the legs are um, shorting out or opening or something. So I decided to go ahead and order a uh, recap kit for both boards, and it's only just three electrolytic capacitors that need to be replaced on each board. Yeah, so and that wasn't too it's like ten bucks. Um, but then I was looking at these. I said, well, if I'm recapping, maybe I should do the filter caps too. And uh, they seem to measure okay. They're a little high on ESR. They should they're measuring about uh, 0 0.03, 0 0.04 ohms and should be about 0 0.01 really. So, and they're, I think, from the 80s, these old sand gamos. So, I did order a kit, and it ups these from 10,000 microfarads to, I think, 17,000 microfarads. And also, it's recommended that you replace that little uh, diode bridge down there, because uh, it's a little underpowered when you uh, increase the capacitance that much. So... That's what I also ordered. That was not cheap. That was uh, you know over a hundred dollars for these two plus that thing. So uh, well, that's all coming. I'll go ahead and replace these capacitors at uh, diode bridge, beef up the power supply a little bit, and then uh, hopefully get this board working. Now the same guy that I bought these components for also sells a completely redesigned board that's from what I've read on the reviews and everything is um, really drastically improves the sound of these these things so if we go, I cannot get this board working yeah, that is an option it's an expensive option but that's something that I I could do so hopefully when the uh, new cut caps come in uh, I'll get this popped in in the meantime I'll keep probing around and looking at values and see if anything looks out of out of order. And that's the next steps. Now here's a bit of a troubleshooting tip. <clears throat> I actually just pasted this uh, um, capacitor back in to finish uh, doing some more testing. Now I'm going to replace those. Got them on order. Should be here in a few days. But I was poking around on the front of this board trying to figure out what the difference is between this one and this one and why I can't adjust this one for uh, you know zero volts on the output. And as I was moving this thing around, I accidentally shorted one of the traces onto this uh, metal um, thing that holds the transistor, power transistors, which is grounded. So that was what 60 volts to ground, and it absolutely blew out that resistor right there. I don't know if you can see it, but yeah, it's got a big black spot on it. So that's need to be replaced. I put these little things here to kind of hopefully prevent me from doing that again. But I've got the soldering iron or soldering station all fired up here, and I get ready to pop that out and put a new one in and uh, continue troubleshooting. So watch out for these traces if you got this thing flopping around. And you power it up, we got some big voltages back here. Alright, we got that, re that uh, blown resistor replaced, and things are kind of back to normal. 
Now, since the uh, last segment, I've uh, uh, replaced all the electrolytic caps on uh, both boards with new ones. And here's the old ones, and at least a couple of those had started to leak. So even though they read okay on uh, capacitance and uh, ESR, they were starting to leak. So maybe that's a sign that 40-year-old caps probably ought to be swapped out. Which means I need to start taking a look at some of my old 70s vintage Japanese amplifiers and receivers. Maybe I should go through them. Anyway, I have, this board still has the nearly half a volt positive DC on the output that I cannot adjust out and I've gone through and measured every single component on here. All the resistors, diodes, and all the junctions on the capacitors. And they're all good, all within spec. So, uh, you know, I've compared voltages between this one, the good one, and the bad one, and what I've found is that uh, here's where you adjust for the offset. And that circuit seems to be working right. But way down here, going into the output transistors, I'm still seeing a shift of uh, this should be a positive voltage, that should be negative voltage, and it's too positive. So there's still something wrong. I have hit this uh, kind of in desperation. I hit this with a heat gun, and I found that uh, if you heat up this resistor right here, which is, uh, or that transistor, which is this one, which is fed from the uh, little offset adjustment, um, it does get closer to normal. So I might just replace these two transistors and see if that helps out. Not really sure what else to do. I don't really understand the circuit well enough to know exactly what's going on, but um, that's probably my next next thing to try. And also, in order to the in addition to the recapping kit for the uh, driver boards, I got the big replacement recommended uh, Nippon Kimcon. Uh, 18,000 microfarad caps for the filter caps. So replace, replace these old uh, Sangamos, 10,000 microfarad. They seem to be okay, but I'm going to go ahead and swap them out. And I also got the updated, more powerful uh, rectifier and an inrush limiter, which when you go up to these uh, bigger caps, you're supposed to have a little bit more power. Uh, from that rectifier, so I will swap all those parts in too. So that's where I am so far. I mean, at least all the good MOSFETs are still good, and uh, just something's something's a little goofy on this driver board. It's getting a little frustrating, but I'll keep working on it and see if I can figure it out. Alright, I think I'm making some progress here on this uh, Hapler amp. Um, I've already recapped, you know, both the driver boards and, you know, upgraded the power supply. And I did that with all the parts from uh, Ed that uh, runs this uh, Fantasia Audio, I guess is how you would say it, um, eBay site. And he's a ex uh, Dynaco and Hafler uh, engineer worked for them for a while and now provides parts to, to maintain these. Luckily it's a great source and he is also very good at uh, giving out technical advice and I contacted him and said hey I'm having trouble getting the uh, you know the voltage down on the output of my amp and he suggested that I try um, getting some matched pairs of transistors for these these uh, input transistors which I was kind of thinking about doing. I'd already ordered some from DigiKey. So here's what I've done is I used my little cheapo multifunction tester to get the uh, HFE on all these transistors and uh, then I wanted to double check that on my curve tracer. So I've got 
the two 190s right now on the curve tracer. And there's one of them. And here's the other one. And if you look at look real closely at the curves, maybe it's hard to do in this video, but you can see how they kind of line up with each other as I what I'm doing is just switching back and forth between transistor A and transistor B. This little A B matching or uh, switching thing that allows you to compare two transistors. These compare very well. Now what I'll do is this is the two 190s. I'll take that one out and put in this one here. Also a brand new transistor, but this is a uh, I think this has an HFE of uh, 167 or so. So there's the original 190 and there's the 167. So you can see how the traces change slightly between A and B. There's the low HFE and there's the higher HFE. 167, 190. So, what I will do is go ahead and take these two 190s and uh, pop them in the proper spot and uh, see if that makes a difference. And I've also got the other type of transistor. I'll go ahead and match up a couple of those. And um, these two are for the, these two down here. And I've got the other ones that go up here. So I'll try that and see if that fixes the problem. All right, looks like we've got it here. So this Q3 and Q4, these are those two transistors. One has a HFE of 210, the other one has an HFE of 101. Those are supposed to be matched. They're obviously not matched. The other two weren't too far off, uh, only by 10. So uh, now, with all those transistors replaced, you see I'm on the millivolt scale and it's bouncing right around zero on the output, which is what it should be. So I'll go back and check all the uh, voltages again just to make sure. Check the bias again. But I think uh, that, you know, matching these input transistor betas is what has solved the uh, offset problem. So thanks again for Ed at uh, Vintage Audio for the suggestions and all the good parts. And uh, I think it's time to put this thing back together and give it a sound test. All right, not playing music yet, but I am playing a tone. Uh, one kilohertz tone going in from the laptop into both sides. I thought I'd just uh, let this do a little burn-in test for about an hour before I uh, button it up and put it back in its normal position. But I'm driving the dummy loads with about uh, 25 watts of power, which is probably more than I ever use. Um, now I did go ahead and replace all the thermal paste on all of the output transistors because it was pretty dried up. And all new caps, all buttoned back up except for the top on. So, and she's looking pretty good. There's one channel. Here's the other one. Print chop. There's a there's a little bit of difference between the two, but that could be just the balance on the laptop. But they're pretty pretty well matched. So let's go for a little bit longer. And then I'll play some music to it. Alright, well there's the uh, old half ramp back in its normal spot where it normally lives. And it's hooked back up and it's sounding great. Cause I got nothing going on. I got nothing going on. So uh, that'll do it for this one. Uh, thanks again, Ed, for the uh, the help with getting this working. And uh, with all new caps, it should be good for another 40 years. I'm hoping. So thanks very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.